the worst thing for me, as same for a child, is to be bored. So I always try to kind of reinvent and try to come up with new ideas to kind of not bore myself. Basically, that's the main. That's the main、uh, fact why I'm trying to bring、uh, like editorial in a different way. So the first time I、um, did something with photos or images was. When I was working in a in a concept store in Amsterdam, and the owner actually asked me to do like more images outside and a bit more like in an editorial way. Basically, I just started shooting the the collections that came in every season、um, outside with photographers. And back then, I also met Carline, who is my girlfriend now, and we started like shooting together. Basically,、uh, these like little mini、uh, series. At first, I looked at the image quite naive and like looked at it and thought about that's a photographer and a model. But then, when I realized that this whole world is behind it,、uh, it clicked very quick for me, and kind of I found my direction. I did have a lot of people that supported me throughout. Like for for example, like Carline, of course. Like it's amazing for a stylist to have like a photographer friend or partner that you can always create something with. So that's definitely like somebody who supported me from the beginning. And then, like for example, Lucien Pages, the, the team at Lucien Pages. So I used to drive from, with the car from Amsterdam to Paris. I would go there, and like, like I didn't know like how it worked in Paris and like the biggest cities. You, you do selection and you wait a day and you get it the day after. I remember telling Jonathan like,、uh, but I need to leave this evening. <laughs> And but he like they always like gave something at least and then also Ibrahim Ibrahim Kamara who、uh, appointed me、uh, at Days Magazine、uh, and it also went quite organically. He we we met each other and he he looked had had looked at my work and like asked me to join like without even knowing who was behind the work. So that was actually quite beautiful. That it's not about who you are but actually really like the work you make. So I would say these three persons or. Organizations that really supported me throughout. I was always dressing quite bold and colorful, and even as a kid, my my parents would dress me up like really like colorful and like basically the same as I would dress now. Recently, I've been back to the Caribbean, where a part of my roots are, and like I always thought it was like my use of color or like the way how I see like styling is comes from myself and. Just myself, but then when I was in the Caribbean, I realized that everything there is colorful and sweet, and like the houses are colorful, the food is colorful and very sweet, the drinks, the people, the the way they dress, the 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 environment itself, and like、so、it kind of clicked to me. Like there is like this, I kind of realized that it's maybe something deeply more deeply rooted than actually just me doing. Doing my work, I think it's somewhere in, in the subconscious、um, that maybe is rooted in the DNA,、uh, and I think it comes from that as well. It, it depends a bit. Like、uh, when I work with, let's say, you named like the artists, like Vivian Sasso or Carline or Paul Koiker. Like、um, when I work with an artist, I I really try to respect the art because if I If I would、uh, go to an artist like Vivian Sosa and ask her to do something that is totally not her world, you kind of break the the art and you break the artist. The trick is to kind of balance out and find, of course, the artist that you can match with. Yeah, you have to kind of be able to trust the other as well, and they have to trust you as well. Like I worked super closely with Bother and、uh, Camille Michelli from Pucci. Um, Kiko Kostandinov, the girls.、Uh, I'm, I'm working on the wounds. Where for me, I'm not. I'm not afraid to commercialize my work, but it's definitely a challenge to kind of twi twist it into a bit more of an accessible package, basically. But at the same time, it's really fun because I like working with, let's say, the bigger houses. You also、uh, discover that they have all these ateliers that can make any idea in a day. So, like the like my universe of 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 design of, and 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 styling expands when when I get to know these kind of brands. So like it's very interesting actually to work also with the bigger, more commercial companies because it's actually a lot of they they have actually a lot of options. I think things can go quite fast. Where actually at the same time you can also go more in in depth. 
Days is really my platform where I can work in it's about styling, it's about fashion, but it also has like this extra message. Like there's a, a couple of stories that I would not have been able to do um, at any other magazine. Like for example, I went to, to Nepal to shoot with a, a six-year-old as the photographer. And the six-year-old, I took him on, on a trip in his city and we dressed up people and he shot the editorial. So like, like these kind of moments, like if I would go to like another magazine I would not name any names <laughs> but it's quite a bold idea to just go somewhere and also like it was quite challenging for myself going to Nepal not even knowing that the boy was still <laughs> loving photography but uh, yeah these kind of like kind of stories that they are very uh, I think special and it's, it's something that I, I'm not able to do any anywhere else so for me the message of the Nepalese boy was that actually everyone can take a picture if you have the right people around you and in the same issue I shot with Paolo Reversi who's like almost the oldest photographer <laughs> so like I love the, to play with these kind of so like concepts that you not it's not so on the nose but like I take the oldest one and the youngest one in the same issue to kind of bring things together again the childlike approach is has definitely always been there it doesn't mean that has that the images or that the work looks childish but it's definitely um, this approach of like kind of as a child you kind of try to break the rules of your of your mother or of your, of your father uh, and like the way how I look at photography and how I look at styling how I look at design and fashion is that at some point uh, after a few years in I was doing a couple of shoes that were quite like similar to each other and like the worst thing for me, and same for a child, is to be bored. So I always try to kind of reinvent and try to come up with new ideas to kind of not bore myself basically. That's the main, that's the main uh, fact why I'm trying to bring uh, like editorial in a different way. For example, I did an editorial with, um, where we try to break uh, world records within the editorial and it's just me trying to not be bored. I tried to find a new way to shoot this editorial, a new, and I wanted to find a new angle. And I think that's really what, throughout the years I've developed like more and more to kind of find new angles to uh, make images. And again, the campaign with, with Zomer is kind of the similar, a similar approach. Like uh, we were thinking how should we, like there's a collection coming, but we cannot show the clothing, but maybe we can show the people that normally respond towards a collection and do them as a mini-me. Like I always try to find a way to look at things in a new way. For me, I really connect with a person still with, with, with the inside. And of course, they're all so beautiful, uh, but it gives me even more knowing that like what kind of energy somebody has or what, what kind of background they come from or what, um, like how they, how, you, how they perceive you. Someone that really stands out for me is Malika Lubak. Um, like when she enters the room, it's like a royalty enter, entering the room. Um, Malika, I would say, um, I have a really good relationship with Grace, Elizabeth, uh, Abeni, Nial. Um, uh, then like there's a few other girls that, for example, Aniel Piok, who was actually a fitting model at, at Pucci that we brought to the campaign that actually walked the show and now she's like doing everything. So when you meet somebody who has kind of the same energy level, um, yeah, you always stay kind of connected. In this industry, like sometimes models can, they can be perceived, be perceived as just mannequins, but if you get to know them, it's like so much more beauty in there. I, try, I really like, I even find the person more beautiful when I know more about them. Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, like so many, like it, on, a, on every shoot, there's at least one package stuck in customs, like it happens. We had a shoot in, in, in Europe with an American magazine where the, all the clothing was coming in trunks from uh, New York to, to Europe. But then um, somebody in the airport in New York lost the carnet. So the paper um, version of the carnet is still apparently the, the holy piece. So without a paper version, you cannot travel the, the, the trunks. So somebody had, like the trunks were already arrived in, in Europe, but like at customs. So we, they had somebody from the delivery company flying with the actual physical paper <laughs> to Europe 
to just give the paper to the customs at, at, the, at the border and then fly back again. <laughs> I think what would be the best setup for a magazine is to uh, cultivate definitely on the digital part and then it reinvest this back into the magazine for the like the print teams to create like beautiful stories. So that like my perfect setup would be like raise the, the funds with digital but then reinvest it back into print. Uh, because at the end the print magazine is like kind of the first the first point of contact that you will have your audience with and then uh, the extension will be the digital part where you can actually maybe um, if you're smart enough finance the, 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 the print magazine from so nowadays the magazines a lot of magazines are quite ruled by brands and because they pay for for the pages I think in the future I would love to see it like shifting a bit I think the first day's cover uh, with the, the girl running on the blue track, I think that was definitely like a, a great moment. Then I would say the Nepal, the Nepalese boy, the AI series I did with uh, with, with Bella and Carline. Uh, so we kind of incorporated AI in the background um, with the model shot in the studio. And then we wanted to connect Bella uh, already for a long time with it. So it took like really a couple months of like getting there. And I think, yeah, I think the interesting part is that, yeah, it's still Bella, you can still see it's Caroline's world. Again, it's for me the innovation part of it that, that I'm really interested in. So I want to try to push the boundary and see how, how, how far we can push it. I would say uh, to find something that you are like really motivated by. Uh, is it a color? Is it a community? Is it a specific designer? Is it a specific... Uh, feeling and then I would really like just chase it like every night and day and I think if you find that thing that you're motivated motivated by it would not be too hard to to also work hard on it or chase it so I think it's really find the thing you like and go for it